we've got uh Dennis Miller went on um on uh what's what, I can't even remember what's his first O'Reilly? name. O'Reilly? No, Ruben. What what is what is uh Ruben's first name? Dave. Dave Ruben. <laughs> I've already forgotten. Ever since he like went on to uh Blaze TV, more or less. Yeah. You can't get in touch with him anymore. (laughs) I can't get in touch with him. He's so busy. No, I just like, you know, the guy's just like a run of the mill, dim right winger. So it's not as interesting to me, but, but when you bring two dim run of the mill, right wingers together, Uh. who both are super funny, then (laughs) I'm in. And therefore let's go. What do you say? Uh, We got a couple of clips here from uh, uh, Miller on Ruben's show. Sam Cedar's choice, I say. All right, let's start with the first one. This is uh, starting at fifty six. Um, this is this is them ruminating on why are kids so obsessed with politics these days? And Miller actually does. I'd not say, have, brother and less, brother and sister, unless there's a, a super serious thing. He doesn't have a he doesn't have a a, a bad answer here. It's not uh, complete, but uh, here it is. And, and, and remember, Andy, you and I have been doing this for uh, ex- you know an extensive period of time. What do you mean, hating Dennis Miller? Yes, and we've been following this, and Dennis Miller has left and returned to politics like yeah. a half a dozen times in the mention, time that we've been criticizing him. Did you mention to people that he is, oh, what kind of comedian he is? What's that? For those who haven't heard him before in the show. What he's kind one of, of com- America's premier reference comedians, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's, one, oh, he's, got, he's the reference comedian. Uh, and here it is. Here he is with Dave Rubin on the Dave Rubin report show and this is i guess from a couple of weeks ago march 27th uh they were a little bit late uh with their uh social distancing but they they don't mind no they're not like scared. that kind of thing you're School right loads. he's swoonable it it makes me laugh bernie sanders can't believe he's pulled it off what, what do you think the obsession with politics is like that kind of thing School you're right yeah you think that's that's it more Listen, than man, when you get to a point and for kids, I know they're going to talk about health care, but I, by and large, I don't think kids in their 20s, they're always so invincible, are thinking, God, I'm going to have a goiter when I'm 70. Is it going to be covered? I, I don't think they work that way. Mm-hmm. I do think a lot of kids are getting out of college now with uh, north of 100 or high 10s school loan. They can't even get off the pad in their 80s. It's almost like they're working with loan sharks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they got to pay that off before they can get to their dreams. <laughs> Therefore, they think, fuck my dreams. I'm not going to have a house. I'm going to live in a small micro apartment. I'm not going to get a car. I'm going to bike around or pick up one of these jerk off scooters on every corner. And I'm going to go out once a week with my friends and film a Michelob commercial where we're all sitting around yeah. and we're all putting our beer on top of the turntable. And, and I'm going to pay turntable? for a great glass of wine because I don't have any options on getting a house or a car. And I think all that's happened is if I was a kid and I was sitting there with a hundred grand worth of uh school loans, and it was for an environmental studies degree, where quite frankly, I went out and they said, uh, here's some some dishwashing solution. Go clean that dove up on the beach. (laughs) I'd be saying, who's the guy who wants to forgive my loan? I'd probably be gone there. But I'm not anymore. I'm the old guy who had minimal school loans, paid them off, and they can't expect me to go back and see it that way. I I don't want to give up everything for people who, if I was a Telling a kid right now, I'd say, brother, unless brother and sister, unless there's a super serious thing you can get a degree in that you can exchange for your green rectangles, don't go. Yeah. Because all these pe- half the people going in right now are getting degrees that mean nothing. And you could have four years on the ground. Find out what you want. Get in there. Get into whatever the equivalent of the mailroom is. Spend those four years. You know, Jesus, for God's sakes, I have 1,500 days while they're sitting in there, you know, holding seances and stuff like this, where uh, you can be out there building a resume where the boss goes, that kid busts his ass. So when the college kid gets out and comes in and goes, I've got a degree. Right, I was in student pause. government. I mean, oh my this, this God, is, it's <clears throat> sad. Well, I mean, at the I give him credit for being aware of the fact that um, that that college loans are right. a huge drag uh, on people's ability to follow their dreams. It's a solid premise. It, it's it's absolutely the case. It, it's funny because it, it cracks him up. Hundred G's north of ten, <laughs> and. 
uh, now he went to Point Park University. Is in Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't know how much it was when he went to college, which was probably forty years ago. I can tell you how much I, I I can tell you how much I paid. I went to the State University of New York at Binghamton. It was two thousand dollars a year with room and board. Really? Yeah, because I went to school. Uh, let's let's put all the cards on the table. I graduated <laughs> instead of lying. I graduated in seventy eight. You do the math. So when I went, so it was like it was like two holy cow. Wait, don't <laughs> really, please. You, you almost hurt my uh, pacemaker. Um, well, so, he, that, so, so it was nothing. It was nothing back then. That was a state school. Private schools were 5,000. Like if you went to a private school like Haverford or whatever else, or, or even Brown. Well, Brown was more, but it was 5,000 a year at a private school. And uh, and he must have he must have gone to school probably, I would bet, in 60, in 19... 19- 70. 70 is he yeah. probably when he went to, to <clears throat> school and yeah i would imagine now what's amazing is here's a guy who's made his career doing stand-up and some variation of it and the idea that this reference comedian was not helped by going to college is absurd like right. this facile thing of like i'm gonna t- i mean put aside the idea that like um we want people to get the education they want so they can chase their dreams and, and that it's higher education is a good thing. Right. It doesn't necessarily turn into dollars for people. It was never supposed to, it was never supposed to be, you went uh, to it, you know, for a specific thing. I mean, some people did, but you were supposed to find out what you wanted to do. Sometimes you find life. out what you want to do, but you also become a better citizen. You yeah. understand like you, you become true. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you get a better education. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, I mean, in high school, I, I don't know if I even the word philosophy was mentioned at my high school. Right. Like, I'm not right. even sure I knew what it was. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not to, uh, but, you know, higher education is a healthy thing for a society. It's not a, a prerequisite. There's a lot of other ways that you can learn other skills that you, that, that, that bring you down. I mean, I think I, I hate to, to, uh, to um, quote George Will, but I remember on his like uh, baseball book or something, he was talking about law school, and it wasn't that you learn a lot there, but it 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 functions like a well, you know one of those things with a, like a blade that you rub on there. It sharpens the mind in some right. fashion, and uh, but he gets he's very facile about that, and I yeah. love the idea like where Ruben's like, why are the kids so interested in politics? Also, what do you think is watching your YouTube shows? Fourteen year old boys, you moron. Well, isn't it like that was probably to me? I, I actually, not that I feel bad, I will never feel bad for Dan Miller. I will, ne- I know that he couldn't get Fiji water on 9 11, and he it was <laughs> his shipment was pushed back like two weeks on his Fiji water. But I have no, he's a horrible human being, and I'll say that from every uh, 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 from everything I've heard about him, but just this idea that he doesn't even know that he's white or that, you know, he doesn't even know what's happened to him or what, what's happened, what his privileges or he, he just, they think, yeah, all these things about like, my loans aren't too much. Now your loans are very, very high, but he has nothing to say about it. He, right. he just hates, he just hates them. He hates environment, the environment and environment. And he didn't used to be that way because he had other people riding for him, I assume. Um, here is, um, another clip. This is, uh, uh, number two, the first one at two thirty-five. Brendan. Um, here is, uh, Dave Rubin and Dave seems so, uh, like oh. he's just, he's just befuddled by everything. He's here not fake. Is. I thought he'd be fake laughing a little bit more. <laughs> he's just sort of smiling, trying to, it's just amazed. He's talking to his hero. <laughs> hey. Do you think a good person, like actually like sort of an enlightened, decent human being could ever be part of this thing? It seems like the ship has pretty much sailed on that. Although I think think a great reckoning could be coming Mm. maybe to our whole political system. Yeah, but it'll be so cataclysmic it remains to me unimaginable. Yeah, no, I think it is unimaginable. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be 29 where all of a sudden the Dow, you know, it's happening now because of the virus, but I'm just saying, It'll either be 1929 or 1860, something like that. The, the unimaginable. You don't want to be the first guy and say, I can see a civil war coming. They'll make you out to be the bad guy. Yeah. But seriously, for the reset to happen now, I don't see it being incremental. I see something 
just the shy of cataclysmic happening. Maybe Corona is it. I don't know. But if anybody thinks the Dems are going to solve Corona after what I just saw in their own caucuses in Iowa, I don't know that I want to hand it off to them. Uh, but I, I don't see it coming back around. I see it getting very tribal. And I can only hope at some point we divvy up the albums like a relationship that's gone. It's like Woody Allen and Annie Hall. We, we, we got a dead shark here. Is that what he used to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we got here is a dead shark. And Divvy the album. So movie. what does that mean, though? What is that? It's well, a 75-year-old movie. He is so, the laughing, the hideous laughing at nothing. The, it's, the, it's like a, the worst comedian in the world is a comedian who just keeps laughing at himself. And he's literally laughing like he thinks it's going to summon up his own sense of humor. The best part about this is that we are um, like barely a third into uh, the interview and he has, he has referenced turntables and albums multiple times. <laughs> multiple times. And he's going to Ruben for the reference. Yeah, like the shark, you know, from that movie, right? From Nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> Good. And what we got here is a dead shark and divvy the albums up. So what does that mean though? What does that actually mean? Like, what, what does that look like? We divvy up the albums, what, meaning what? We're in- We should split up, in my mind. I don't see it coming back around. I don't know how to do that. That doesn't I, you know, work out very well for guys like me and you in California, you know? You move. I don't even know if it's geographic. I, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, know what he's saying either. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I love Ruben going like, where Miller goes, like you move. And Ruben's like, uh, where do I have to go? I mean, didn't Ruben like have a big thing where he was going to move to Texas anyways because of taxes in California? No. Dave Rubin, like where's Dave Rubin going to go? His whole thing is sort of enjoying everything being in a, a, a liberal progressive state brings you. Uh, and, and, but he's still the, uh, the, the conservative mind. Well, go, hey, head to, head to South Dakota, dude. Enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. it. Bask in all the, 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 uh, the, the glory that you'll have there. I just can't believe that he's, I just can't believe that he, but, but I mean, I really see, cause I, I knew Dave Rubin years ago. He, he was at that moment. He was as, he was a, uh, he's sweet. He was a sweet, you know, we were commiserating at the time about the young Turks or whatever the thing was, or because I came up with the nickname Jank Demonius, which is one of my, <laughs> <laughs> one of my classic but he so he's but then he all of a sudden it, it's it's just like he i think he really wanted to be a comic and he probably is not funny at all and then he just he's into this thing where it's like it's like if uh, you you if you had one bit hey men and women are different am i right and you just kept hitting that bit forever it's an incorrect premise his premise is incorrect about liberals and everything so what is he going to do I hope he's going to be gone in about a year. Well, I don't Both know. He's got his own. Uh, um, is that it? Uh, Brendan, should we go to the next clip? Bill O'Reilly. Basically right. I mean, they say these things about him, but is there a piece of him that strikes you as very much like he oh, has this, the mind of a comic? Because I saw him live. Good timing, I, I saw okay. Oh, sorry. Wait, this is, I'm sorry. We're back. Uh, this is uh, the next clip. This is, uh, Ruben is talking about uh, uh, Donald Trump. Does he have a mind of a comic? I, I actually think that's not a bad premise. On some level, he does. He's a bad. He's not that funny. The but only he thing, like a road only, comic. He's he's only good at certain insult, like an insult, like an obnoxious uncle who occasionally, because he insults everybody, says something somewhat amusing. Donald Trump. And he also has a a an audience that is, um, you know. This is like after you've been on a sitcom and you go out and tour, everybody shows up, everything you say is funny. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Go ahead. Right. Right. <laughs> this reviews for house painting, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I think, well, I think you're, you're basically right. I mean, they say these things about him, but is there a piece of him that strikes you as very much like he has this, the mind of a comic? Because I saw him live. Good timing, I, I saw him live in December, and he goes up there, and you know he's got the prompter, but he's also winging it half the time, and he's ad libbing and everything. And he did this thing about he was talking about windmills, and he goes, he goes, I've been studying windmills my whole life. Nobody knows more about windmills than me. And then he starts, you know, giving rifling off some stats about windmills that were obviously on the prompter. 
And I turned to David and I was like, you know that the headline in Politico today is gonna be Donald Trump says he knows more about windmills than anyone, which he <laughs> obviously meant as a joke. And then lo and behold, <laughs> we see all the headlines, Buzzfeed, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I think that's his greatest gift. He knows how to punk these guys every yeah, time, wh whether you artist. like it or not. Whether you like it or not. I can't even do that with him anymore. Everybody talks about Trump now. Notice how many times the word whether you like him or not comes up. Yeah. It's always laying covering fire down. Yeah. I don't like him some days, but it's about more trivial shit than some of the stuff he's doing, which matters. I, I think some of the things he's doing as far as the you know, when somebody comes to me and say, say, says that the black unemployment rate's down to its lowest ever, and, and somebody immediately goes, Obama's talking about it. <laughs> okay, I'll give Obama credit for that. I'm gonna give him credit for getting it down a little lower. I just can't play this stupid game where he's the antichrist. For God's sakes, there are days I feel that he's... Uh, uh, we should also just notice that, I mean, he's literally saying this days before Donald Trump is gonna go like, look, if we lose 200,000 people... Oh, I mean, there's like, he's, there's, you know, I... I I, you know, I was an early adopter saying that that he's hit. You know, that, that Trump is Hitler. I'm, I never meant it as a joke. You know, people. I've said this a million times. If you go back and you look at history, uh, they made fun of Hitler in Germany. They thought he was a buffoon. And and, and in fact, uh, the people who were still from the Weimar thing, they they thought if they let him in, he'll do a little thing, give him a little area. It'll it'll you know it'll calm him down. You know, so he. I mean, I, he wasn't as stupid as as Trump. I mean, Trump clearly is uh, knowingly stupid, but the fact that he literally wouldn't care if everybody in New York died, Donald Trump, he wouldn't care if every Democrat in this country died. It depends. What's the economy look like after that? Right. If yeah. it's up, then OK, fine. But I mean, literally, he's a sociopath. So someone like Dennis Miller, who's actually going, I kind of like this guy. He must be he, he can't believe that. He, can, he must be so much wanting to have a career by appealing to these idiots. Uh, I don't know. I think it's I think it's someone sincere uh, with Miller on some level. And, you and, and the and first of all, I love the idea that uh, Ruben is like, it's a, clearly a joke that he knows. No, about that's just a lie. What, well, first of all, what kind of joke construction is that like? I'm going to make fun of the fact that everything I know about windmills, I don't know anything about. Yes, windmills. That's the joke. Here's some facts about windmills. What? That doesn't yeah. make any sense. Or that that Trump has the ability to punk anyone. He's not this whole idea that he was just like a great uh, showman. He's the worst showman. He's the worst. He's been terrible at everything. It's a reflection about how easily duped we are as a nation that he's gotten popular. I think there's a lot to that. All right, here's the um, here is uh, uh, Dennis Miller on O'Reilly and uh, talking. Who's about funnier O'Reilly. than Dennis Miller? I think now. Uh, O'Reilly well, just did funnier. a thing where he basically said, um, you know, the thing that's nice about this is it's like basically coronavirus is just taking a day, taking down like the weak uh, members of the herd, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weak. They were on their last legs, he said. Last legs, exactly. Here is uh, Dennis Miller. Uh, um, oh, this is he's on with O'Reilly, right? This is clip number four. Yeah, this is great. Oh, is this his show? This is a, a Billow show. This okay. is such a great, this is everything you want to know about Dennis Miller in one minute and 45 seconds. Here we go. So Bernie's out well, here, and who are you going to vote for now? Oh, come on. Bernie got paid today. You think you're going to see half of it? Of course not. No. Listen, Bernie folds, Bernie folds quicker. He forgot. He didn't get the memo, the true believers bill. True believers die on the parapets at the Alamo. They don't die on the screen porch at the lake house. Bernie Sanders is a complete phony. Nobody gets out earlier for somebody who's willing to, I'm going to storm the Bastille, but I think I'll stop down here at the outdoor cafe. And you know something? It's going to be Biden now, I think, only because of this. I think Biden made a horrible tactical error. And I don't think, I don't know if Trump thought this when he said, uh, Bernie, you know, now Biden puts his two bits in. I should call the White House and tell him how to handle this. Trump, who I think is like Amarillo Slim playing cards at Binion's with amateurs, I think Trump says, yeah, I'll take that call. <laughs> Trump then goes up to the press conference. He says, I talked to Biden. Uh, you know, it was good, good call, good times. Now, listen, Biden was positing, I'm sure Trump is the Antichrist. And when it came time to debate, let's face facts, 
you know, Joe Biden could not debate Trump on live TV. It would be like that tiny person, Eddie Goodell, who played Major League Baseball digging in against Nolan Ryan. He just can't do it. So now they've got a picture of them getting along together in in people's mind's eye after Trump brought it up at the press conference. I think if Biden had just stayed in the back seat for Sonic commercials and never talked to Trump anywhere along the line, when it came time to debate, he could have said, I will not legitimize this man by being on the same debate stage as him. But now that they've been nice, I think he's got to show up for one. Well, and if he shows up for one, I it mean, is over, man. He might as well walk out to that podium carrying an Acme firecracker case from a Roadrunner cartoon because he cannot stand yeah. up in a debate against Trump. Wow, Closing really with a horrible <laughs> cartoon <laughs> reference. How great. Oh, my God. He's like the Roadrunner and he's like Elmer Fudd. And he's like anything I could think of that would be funnier than the horrible reality of my hideous personality. Amarillo Slim, Slim. was he's a, he's a, a poker professional, player. Uh, yes, poker player. One of the player. best poker players in the world. And Donald Trump is not playing chess or checkers. <laughs> he couldn't play one hand of poker. It's just a total lie. I, 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 it is fascinating that they are that the analysis is that shallow. I like very few people know that uh, that that Biden spoke to him. Uh, Biden doesn't want to get out of doing a debate with um, so with Donald Trump. Um, I, I, you know, I it's it's, and first of all, like what? How would this go? Like, Joe Biden doesn't want to debate me, but even though we t spoke on the phone seven months ago. And he, I like, Dennis Miller thinks he came up with a good one there. He's like, you know where Biden went wrong? You should have told him I'm not legitimized. It's like he, he's, he is a, a combination of an out-of-touch uncle and someone who lost his sense of humor or, or maybe never had it and was covering it up. Um, uh, Brendan, wait, Brendan, get on. So wait, would, uh, do I have more? Is there more than one page? I just have uh, uh, four no, it's, clips. No, it's those four clips, but yeah. the sonic joke he, he's made in every video. I, well, what I does that Sonic joke mean in the back seat? There's an Sonic. ad for Sonic Burgers, right, or something? Yeah, they have two guys in the. Aren't they in the front seat or are they in the back seat? They're in the front seat. They're in the front seat. So who's in the back seat? Joe Biden, apparently, according to, <laughs> to Miller. <laughs> I have to open up my mind to the imagination of comedy. Right. Here, I'll, I'll pull the cleanest uh, telling of it. I don't. I don't quite get the. Uh, First of all, like it's seat. an obscure reference, and I think it's obscure. And and I know uh, one the of reference. the actors in the Sonic commercials. In fact, he used to live in my building. He seems pretty funny. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, I can't even remember his name now. He, but he was also he played Mike Pence, and it was the EP of the President Show. All right, run this. I'm going to like deconstruct these Sonic ads. He keeps he talking about. So let's do Biden. Um, Listen, I, I've always made fun of Biden. You know, I, I think he's anybody who gets in at 29 and is now 77 is inviting guys like me to make fun of him. Yeah. I know he's helping me. Joe, I, I, you know, I don't need your help. Go, you live your life. Is he I'm helping just, you? How's he helping you? Well, he always talks about how I've been in public service. Oh. And you just want to say, oh, for Christ's sake. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for helping. But, you know, I, I, I don't dig guys who get off... Uh, who, quite frankly, get off their old man's nickel onto the public dime in their late 20s and ride it all the way. Uh, it always bored me with Jerry Brown. You know, he's pitching himself as, you know, an ethereal creature. And I always think, brother, you've been on the teat for like Forever. your sixth decade now. OK, so don't tell me about what a free form you are. Um, but Biden uh, has never been as smart as they told me he was or he told you he was. Anybody who knows their IQ is a big tell for me. Two things. When a guy you're golfing with goes into the woods and you get to the green, you go, what'd you get? And he pulls his hand up. I know he's fucking. Uh -huh. And whenever a guy says, I know my IQ, I go, oh, Christ, I, I, I don't like that to begin with. I go, why? Why do you know your IQ? What, 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 are you that insecure? Are you faking it? That much? Biden's one of those guys who knows his own IQ. And I never saw him as a genius. I always think of Joe Biden as the third guy in a car in a Sonic commercial, you know, just popping up in the back seat. And, uh, <laughs> I love the team shots, too. So he's not genius. I see. I but get now it. He's, he's the adult. third guy. Right. He's there. the third guy. Right, that you never see. I get it. Yeah. You know, I guess he like, he, I, I wonder if if uh, if there was a situation where he sat down with his uh, intern and said, I need I need fresh stuff. We'll watch the Sonic commercials from two years ago. I think all he does is he's so he's semi-conscious. He walks through the world semi-conscious. 
he knows he's hated. He's no, he knows inside that he's a hateful person. I know deep psychology. I've been in therapy and I realize I hate myself. I'm trying to get over that. So I, I, you can see so much rage and misdirected hate. And the laughing to me is like a, such a, te- such a, a sad tell. Well, here's the good news, Andy. Uh, Dennis He's Miller here? Is, is back. Uh, <laughs> Dennis, Dennis Miller is back. He's got a show on RT. It's called, um, what is it? The other Dennis Miller option or the other, other Miller? What is, what is the, uh, what is the Dennis Miller show now? The option. Dennis oh! Miller plus one. He's on retweet television. He's on uh, RT. and I uh, said retweet. How funny am I? <laughs> Pretty good. Not bad for a Friday morning. Uh, Andy, it was great catching up with you, man. I love you. I miss uh, you so, so much. What, what's, uh, what, where are you touring? <laughs> I do. I, I have actual good, good news, though. I have been sitting on this album that I made in 2013 because, I, because of my OCD problems. And I finally decided just release it digitally. It's called Hence the Humor. Really? Yes. And it was made in 2013 or no, t- maybe. And I did all kinds of future jokes in it. I said, like, I said, this is going to come out in a few years. So let me just see, like, uh, where'd you get that shirt, sir? Did you buy it with Bitcoin? <laughs> so I, did those I also said, I wonder how President Boehner is doing. Nice. So all these references are in this show. So it might look current. And it's well, I was going to say, it's, uh, it's um, um, fresher than, than the material we just went over with Dennis Miller. So, And also... <laughs> Also, I have I do have a, a podcast called Thought Spiral. You already mentioned that. Yes, of course. I don't know. Is it about the plugging, Sam, or is it about two people who love each other, who are who have the opportunity to check in, and other things like that? Plugging is important. That's true. Andy, always a pleasure. Thanks, man. I love you, Sam. Thank you so much. All right, folks.